Welcome back to Madman Review. When it comes to defensive firearms, reliability is paramount. It can make all the difference between life and death. Whether you're a law enforcement officer, a member of the military, or a responsible gun owner, the last thing you want is a pistol that fails to function when you need it most. In this video, we'll talk about some of the least reliable pistols that have garnered notoriety for their frequent malfunctions and lackluster performance. Choosing a reliable pistol is crucial for any individual seeking personal protection or engaged in professional duties. A dependable firearm instills confidence, ensuring that every trigger pull will deliver the intended result. However, not all pistols are created equal. Some models have gained an unfortunate reputation for their unreliability, causing frustration and potential danger for those who rely on them. To compile this list, we have analyzed various sources, including first-hand experiences, expert opinions, and user feedback. Our aim is not to demean or belittle any particular brand or model, but to shed light on those pistols that have consistently shown deficiencies in reliability. By highlighting these firearms, we hope to inform and guide potential buyers, as well as spark discussions on the importance of reliability in firearm selection. Throughout this video, we will examine each of our top 8 least reliable pistols in detail, discussing their design flaws, performance issues, and online complaints from owners. From misfeeds and light primer strikes, to inconsistent ejection, and overall poor craftsmanship, these pistols have demonstrated a high propensity for malfunctioning, making them some of the worst choices for critical situations. Number 8. Taurus Model 608 On the surface, the Taurus 608 is an aesthetically pleasing revolver that offers an impressive capacity and robust construction. Designed for wheel gun aficionados who want a budget revolver with a higher than usual ammo capacity, this revolver boasts an 8-shot cylinder and is chambered in 357 Magnum, so it also accepts standard and overpressure 38 Special. With an MSRP of $859.99, you would think it's a steal. Well, I suppose there are owners of the Tor 608 that could say that. Me, personally, as much as I'd like to, I can't. The Tor 608 stands out as the only revolver on this list. It is a huge disappointment in terms of performance. It suffers from frequent malfunctions due to light primer strikes often occurring with each cylinder. It also has timing problems. Shooting this revolver can be a pain in the neck with a seemingly never-ending stream of malfunctions. Revolvers are typically known for their reliability due to their simplicity and ease of maintenance, but that did not hold true for this particular model. Light primer strikes plague the Tor 608, very likely caused by subpar manufacturing standards and a lack of attention to the end product's quality. If you have a penchant for unreliable revolvers, then the Tor 608 might pique your interest. However, I strongly advise against it. It just leaves too much to be desired, as it falls far short of meeting even the most basic expectations. If you want a budget 357 Magnum revolver that just works out of the box, and you don't think a Ruger or a Smith & Wesson is worth the price, check out the EAA Vindicator or the Sarsomaz SR38. Number 7. Remington RP9 the Remington RP9 introduced in 2017 is a striker-fired pistol that falls into the category of big, duty-sized firearms. However, despite its substantial appearance, it manages to maintain a relatively manageable weight. This is due to the implementation of a polymer frame, which significantly lightens the overall feel of the gun compared to what it would be if constructed with a metal alloy. At first glance, the RP9 is undeniably visually appealing boasting an aesthetic that easily surpasses that of a Glock 17. I had high hopes and really wanted to like it, but within a few months of its release, owners began to complain. Remington, known for their typically high-quality firearms, made a feeble attempt at building a full-size polymer-framed striker-fired pistol with the RP9, and the outcome was nothing short of a failure. There are two main reasons behind its lack of success. One, it is highly unreliable. Rounds would become trapped in a specific area at the edge of the feed ramp, resulting in frequent jamming of the gun. And two, it suffers from abysmal ergonomics. Every time you pull the trigger, it feels like you are being slapped by this handgun. Putting aside the shooting experience, the RP9's reliability is among the worst we have ever encountered. It sucks so bad that if you were looking for a firearm to practice consistent malfunction clearing, the RP9 could be your go-to choice as it can barely make it through two or three rounds without encountering issues. Number 6. Sky CPX-2 
The Sky CPX-2 is a budget-oriented subcompact pistol that operates on a hammer-fired double-action-only or DAO system. It supposedly caters to both novice and experienced shooters by prioritizing ergonomics and simplicity. It is chambered in 9mm and features a 3-inch barrel and a polymer frame, which contributes to its lightweight nature. Additionally, the grip surprisingly boasts commendable ergonomics. However, despite these positive attributes, the gun falls short in various other aspects. It is plagued by numerous malfunctions, including double feeds, light primer strikes, and failure to extract with all types of ammunition. These issues are not isolated incidents, as evidenced by the multitude of comments in videos showcasing its first shots. Furthermore, in-person conversations with individuals and numerous videos have revealed a consistent pattern of encountering these problems. Hence, it is evident that the gun's deficiencies extend beyond my personal experience. In my opinion, the CPX-2 simply fails to meet expectations. If you find yourself in the $200 to $300 price range, I would advise considering alternatives such as a high point which offers superior reliability compared to the Sky CPX-2. Alternatively, you can look into the Taurus G2 or G3 line of pistols. And if you can manage to save up a bit more, you can go with a Kanak. Any Kanak handgun is going to be a thousand times more reliable than this Sky CPX-2, and if you're lucky, maybe you can find one in NIB condition selling for only $250. Number 5. Remington R-51 The Remington R-51 ranks among the most inferior firearms one could possibly acquire. It was truly disheartening to learn that the company faced a substantial settlement for the Sandy Hook lawsuit and has struggled with bankruptcy in recent years. I sincerely hope that Remington can find a way to overcome these challenges and secure its future. Initially, I had high hopes for the R-51, primarily because of its resemblance to a futuristic ray gun designed for enthusiasts. However, if I had to choose between a brand new R-51 Gen 2 priced at $360 or a used High Point C9 available for $100, I would undoubtedly opt for the C9. The Remington R-51 stands as one of the most notorious examples of a gun plagued with malfunctions. It suffers from a wide range of issues, including failures to feed, where bullets nosedive into the magazine and feed ramp, as well as failures to eject, resulting in frequent stove piping. Moreover, the R-51 experiences problems with its magazine release and slide, often leading to failures to return to battery. To make matters worse, the R-51 fails to meet the criteria for a reliable range gun, particularly for individuals with larger hands prone to slide bite. But that's not all. Field stripping the R-51 for cleaning becomes an arduous task, one that you would likely avoid after the initial experience. Given the limited use you would have with this firearm beyond a couple of boxes of ammunition, the need for cleaning would be minimal unless you plan on selling it. Number 4. Taurus GX-4 In the spring of 2021, Taurus introduced the GX-4, a compact polymer handgun chambered in 9mm aiming to penetrate the rapidly growing market for concealed carry microcompact pistols. This market segment has seen significant expansion since the release of Sig Sauer's popular Sig P365 over three years ago. The GX-4 is a striker-fired semi-automatic pistol that utilizes a locked breech short recoil action sharing a resemblance to other micro-compact polymer handguns in terms of appearance. It features a serrated flat-faced trigger with a safety blade reminiscent of Glock's trigger safety. Promoted as Taurus's first micro-compact 9mm, the GX-4 boasts a streamlined design for durability, reliability, and ease of concealment. Remarkably, it offers a magazine capacity comparable to full-size handguns from previous decades, impressive out-of-the-box accuracy, Taurus's limited lifetime warranty, and an affordable MSRP of $400. So, why is it on this list? Because, just last May 24th, Taurus issued a recall. If you go to GX4SafetyNotice.com, it reads, quote, Some GX4 pistols assembled and sold only in the United States may, under certain circumstances, discharge when dropped. Safely unload and stop using your GX4 immediately. Failure to observe this warning may result in injury or death to you or others. Taurus will inspect, repair if necessary, and return your pistol to you as soon as possible free of charge. Number 3. Smith & Wesson CSX In early 2021, Sig Sauer caused quite a stir with the release of their P320 AXG, a variant of the P320 featuring an aluminum frame instead of the conventional polymer frame. Following suit, Smith & Wesson introduced the CSX. 
And the CSX is a micro-compact hammer-fired pistol with an aluminum frame and a slim grip that offers interchangeable palm swell grip inserts. It boasts a magazine capacity of 10 or 12 rounds, and its standout feature is the single-action-only trigger. Due to its hammer-fire design, the CSX incorporates a beaver tail to prevent hammer bite. The exposed hammer and beaver tail lend the CSX a reminiscent look and feel of the 1911. If you've ever fired a 1911, you know it possesses one of the smoothest and lightest triggers among modern pistol designs. On paper, the CSX combines the reliability and simplicity of the shield with the comfort and superior trigger pull characteristic of all steel single-action-only pistols. However, it turned out to be the exact opposite of what everyone thought it could be. The single-action-only trigger of the CSX is much heavier than the 1911s and exhibits a longer reset compared to the shield. And there are times it just fails to reset altogether, which is why it made it to this list. It poses a safety concern in self-defense scenarios. As it stands, the CSX should be strictly used for target practice. If you're itching for an all-steel hammer-fired single-action-only shield, it may be worthwhile to wait for the second generation of the CSX. Otherwise, the polymer-framed shield would be a better choice. Number 2. Shadow Systems CR920 Shadow Systems, based in Plano, Texas, is a designer and manufacturer of high-quality firearms and gun parts. Their MR920 is a remarkable piece of hardware, essentially a superior version of the Glock 19. But their CR920, which is supposedly an upgraded Glock 43X, turns out to be a huge failure. The CR920 boasts front and rear slide serrations, a 3-inch barrel, and a magazine capacity of either 10 or 12 rounds. It comes optics ready straight out of the box, and features an aesthetically pleasing design unlike the unremarkable appearance of the Glock 43X. Furthermore, the CR920's texture and grip angle have garnered praise from users. It feels comfortable and secure in the hands, again because it's supposed to be an improved version of the Glock 43X. Its release at SHOT Show 2022 generated excitement among enthusiasts. However, despite its touted advantages, the CR920 has become Shadow System's worst pistol due to its reliability and feeding issues. Numerous dissatisfied owners have shared their experiences online, primarily revolving around reliability problems. Some users have also complained about the barrel's finish chipping. Six months after its release, Shadow Systems issued a statement claiming that all reliability and feeding issues associated with the CR920 had been resolved. They specify that the problems were isolated to early production CR920 barrels, which included a machine feature referred to as the butt. If your preference is for a no-frills, micro-compact pistol with a 10-round magazine capacity that is optics-ready out of the box, it would be advisable to choose the Glock 43X MOS instead. Number 1. SIG P210 Carry If you have a preference for all-steel pistols, a single glance at the SIG P210 will make your heart skip a beat. But if you're not, then the SIG P210 Carry will look weird. I recall when SIG first introduced it, members of the firearms community raised a question. What's the point in this carry version? The full-size SIG P210 is renowned for its exceptional accuracy and craftsmanship, but it is an older design that doesn't accommodate high-capacity double-stack magazines. Today's concealed carry handguns market is dominated by high-capacity micro-compacts like the SIG P365 and Springfield Hellcat. This SIG P210 carry doesn't make sense. SIG enthusiasts purchased a P210 carry anyway, Soon after, reports from owners began to emerge on SIG's message boards, highlighting issues with the pistol failing to return to battery. Owners who experienced this malfunction note that it occurs only when attempting to hand-cycle the slide while it is locked on an empty magazine. Some owners found a solution by gently pushing the slide forward, while others resorted to alternative methods such as using a mallet to tap the slide forward. Undoubtedly, the P210 carry boasts incredibly tight tolerances, characteristic of high-quality production firearms primarily designed for accuracy, but it doesn't change the fact that it carries a notably high MSRP somewhere north of $1,500. If you want an expensive production pistol, the FN509 midsize with an MSRP of $754 is a much better option.